Miss Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing today? Ladies, we have a very special guest on our set today. As always, it's your boy Gamero. We got ill logic, you is. know, as always. But we do have a very special guest on set today. The first ever repeat guest. Okay. On Midnight in Miami, which okay. is a come on, come on. That's that's how you know you're making it, man. Like mm -hmm. Joe Rogan's had like, you know, a couple of guests like five times in that day. So uh ladies and gentlemen, we got Danny the Colombian warrior Chavez. How you doing, brother? Thank you guys for having me again. No, I feel brother. special. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing, brother? Good, good, good. How's uh how's the uh fight prep coming along? Uh very good. You know, um, uh, last time we did this podcast actually uh, it was an amazing podcast but we didn't fight you we know? did not fight we did not fight so it kind of it kind of kind of killed everything mm. but uh this time it's gonna go down this time it's gonna go down yeah. why don't you give our guests a little bit of a rundown as to what happened last time well what happened last time is uh okay when we went to a press conference uh which is a day before the wins mm. the guy didn't show up to a press conference that's okay a lot of people sometimes don't show up. Mm. That happens. It yeah, happens. Especially when you're, you're from out of town, you're not from Miami. Sometimes you don't get to make it. And then like late at night, like around seven, eight o'clock, they call me and they're like, oh, the guy pulled out. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, what just happened? You know? And they're like, oh, they, he cannot make weight. And actually earlier in the morning, I'm, I'm actually, like, early in the morning, they had already called me. They said that he couldn't make one, 145. Cause that's what, that was where we actually were going to meet up. He could only make 150. So I'm like, okay. I was at 151. I'm like, well, I get to eat and cut a little weight. I don't have to cut that much anymore, but I'm still down to fight. Were you alarmed or no? Hmm? Were you alarmed at all at that point or no? No, but that happened before and we still fought. So, yeah, because yeah, some, people, some people just, whatever, um, they don't know how to cut weight. They don't know how to take care of themselves so they get sick or uh, they just don't know how to cut weight and they, they find themselves uh, in a bad situation and then they got to like, Call the promotion and be like, yo, let's see if the guy could agree for something else. And I agree. I was like 150. Now, I, question. When that sort of situation happens, do you, given that the other opponent wasn't professional, do you already have, um, do they offer you some sort of um, uh, advantage? Uh, no. No? no. No. They were just like, oh, look, we're going to, they're like, this guy, uh, what just happened is like, after that, they just call me like late at night and they're like, oh, this guy uh, can't even make 150. And I'm like, okay. Where is he at? They're like, he's at 167, 165. And I'm like, what the hell? What do you mean he's at 167, 165? I'm 151. You know what I mean? Like, if he's cutting weight, he should be down on the 50s. Yeah. And, uh, and then I talked to my coaches. And my coaches are like, okay, um, you know, we believe we're going to, we, we always believe we could be win any fight that we train for. Mm. So they're like, okay, then he said, you know what? Just go eat, get back to where you normally are. Because I'm normally a 165 guy. That's mm -hmm. why I walk around. They're like, go eat. And, uh, Meet him up at 160. And we call a guy and we tell him, okay, 160. He said, no. He's like, oh, no, I can't even make 160. He's sick. That he's throwing up, that he was having diarrhea. And, uh, you know, at that point, I'm like, you know, it's crazy because um, when you're getting closer to the fight, you know, you're cutting a lot of weight, you're stressed, and a lot of emotions are going on, you know what I mean? And actually, you guys got me very mad. Mad and upset and sad at the same time. I was just very upset. By the way, his name is Donald Bush. So everybody could know who his name is. Donald Bush. Bitch. We did so. give him the come being of the day. Yeah. The following, the following, the following episode, he got come being of the you know, day. Actually, I don't really talk about him that much. I don't. Even, I never went onto social media and talked bad about him. I yeah. didn't do anything like that because I just don't. I don't have time to waste on on people like that. Yeah. But I want people to know his name is Donald Bush. Yeah, it was very um, unprofessional what he did. Yeah. Um, especially to pull that sh bullshit. Um, last minute. Um, what are your thoughts on taking on last minute fights? I don't mind last minute fights. It depends, you know. I mean, uh, whether you have, you know, it, 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 like it don't really matter. But they they didn't they didn't really have something good. You know what I mean? They had like a, I, I'm not into fighting chumps. Mm. You know what I mean? You're not gonna come and going from a guy that's six and one. I think he was six and one to go to a guy that's two and five, two and six. It's just it's just nothing there for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So bad. we just we just said fuck it. You know what I mean? We wait for the next show. 
you know, we just we're already well prepared. We just be more prepared for the next one, and then all, all of a sudden they offer me the next show, main event, title fight. So I was like, oh, even better. Speaking of the next show, that is, um, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, Global Legion FC, home of the fighter, uh, fourteen for the World Featherweight Championship. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Um, we got Danny Chavez against uh dylan kayla yeah if i'm not mistaken yeah uh what do you know about your opponent um have you done any sort of research what do you give me a little bit of a rundown uh just like the last time i was here i told you guys i don't really like to uh, study them so much i still mm -hmm. see what they do i look at their habits i look at what they do um he's a softball so i had to actually you have to know where they are at least whether they're softballs or they're orthodox and he's a softball grappler he strikes too, throws uh, some kicks. He likes to clinch and throw elbows, you know. But uh, what I what I did right now, like I I look at him. But what I did is that I told one of my guys, uh, it was one of my uh, one of my guys, Justin Arteaga. He's a softball. Mm -hmm. and there's not many softballs in gyms, you know. You find you rarely find people that are softballs. So I told him to watch him and mimic him, you know. And he's been doing his homework of watching him and trying to mimic him while we spar and while we train. Mm -hmm. So I tell him to do that for me. That's the favor he's doing for me. He's the one that study him the most because he has to mimic him. Mm. You know, now he cannot mimic the elbows. He cannot cut me or anything like that. But he yeah. could mimic his approach, his timing, his movement, stuff like that. You know, as best as you can. He's not gonna be able to be a hundred percent who he is, the, the, what how the other guy fights. But just give me give me a look into what he does. You know? Danny, you've fought um, for titles before. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, they sometimes didn't go your way. Uh, they tell didn't me, at all. <laughs> tell me, <laughs> tell me why they didn't go your way. Tell me why this is different. Um, and tell me what um, where your head was at um, for those uh, opportunities compared to this opportunity. Believe it or not, the first one I fought, it was in a featherweight tournament. It was the first ever featherweight undefeated tournament. So we were all undefeated. I got to the finals. I ended up fighting Jordan Parson, rest in peace. He actually passed away. Rest in peace. Um, I'll say, um, man, the both both times I fought for titles, it was very close fights. Mm -hmm. We went all the way to the fifth round, except the second one. The second one, he finished me with a guillotine in the fifth round, last two minutes. But they were very close fights. Um, I'll say they just they were the better man that day. I cannot I cannot come in and give excuses. I trained, and um, they trained, and um. I'll say the difference between this one and the last one, I was younger. I'm older now. I just do things different. I, I, my head is in the right place. I'm not saying it wasn't in the right place at that time. I'm just saying, I'm just, right now it's, it's go time. Like I don't have that much time anymore like I had before. So I'm really, really focused. Gotcha, gotcha. Bill? Yeah, that's dope, man. Um, And I, I, I understand that because a lot of times it's like in the beginning, I guess, because we get so, I wouldn't say comfortable, but it's like, Sometimes we're so sure of ourselves. We don't think mm. about what the consequences can be. You feel okay. me? We're training or I mean, you're training because for me, it wouldn't be training for fighting because mm. I don't do MMA, mm. uh, contrary to popular belief. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but even like when it comes to, you know, getting done, things done here, we have deadlines to meet for clients and stuff. And it's like, nah, I got that much time. I got that too much time. And but until you fail, you don't understand like or you don't realize that it can happen. Mm. Like I like to think I'm immortal. Yeah. So like until I get hurt, until I'm like, hurt, oh yeah. shit, I can actually get hurt. Yeah. So let me, you know, focus a little harder. So I could, I could see how that shit would like turn you completely different now. Cause was, this, well, no, my bad. Was it Mike Tyson that said everybody has a plan to get punched in the face? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and it's it's a pretty good, especially you know, men, well, bro. Like we, we, that's how we move. We're like, yeah, yeah nah, we're good, we're immortal. So. Well, I like that quote, but at the same time, like in in fighting you have to improvise all the time mm -hmm. you know me and my coaches come up with ways of fighting these fights but sometimes it doesn't go that way but you 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 trained not just to fight one style or one situation you know you really ready to be anywhere and be in the most uncomfortable moments if you're not ready for that you're gonna lose you're not gonna be able to because you have to improvise it's just like an acting not everybody goes straight from the script sometimes you gotta improvise yeah i'll give you a perfect example uh the django unchained you ever seen that movie? Yeah. Okay. Leonardo exactly DiCaprio. You know the scene I'm talking know, about. Yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio cut his hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was not part of the it was script. Not part of the script. It, it was, was just by mistake he cut it, but he's such an amazing actor. He kept that on, like, he, he kept, kept it. he grabbed yeah. the blood and he smeared it around the girl's yeah. face. That was and it was such a badass scene. If you look at it, you're like, What? 
it wasn't in the script. He improvised. Yeah. That's yeah, how you're supposed yo, to Yo, somebody put blood in my face, bro. <laughs> First yo, of all, cut. I'm when's the fight? last time you got tested? <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, yo, for uh, real. No, yo, yeah. I didn't even think that's about that. That's what I'm that. saying. Like, holy you know, shit. Like, that's a lawsuit. that <laughs> happened, bro. For real. Um, for real. Speaking of testing, why don't you give me a little bit of a rundown as far as testing in the MMA world, both for, um, you know, drugs or enhancements and also for... Um, Regular being, drugs? No, for if you have some sort of, like... Uh, Heroin CD, addiction? No, or? STD or that sort of thing <laughs> in your blood. Because I know there's a lot of blood in the ring, and I wouldn't, you know, if yeah. somebody has some sort of disease. I never thought about that. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah, right. well, we do get tested before fights. Okay. Like I got a, uh, I got my, well, I did my blood test like about November, December. Uh -huh. Now, I one thing I always thought it was like, we should, shouldn't we get tested before every single fight? Yeah. You know, you know, blood test only lasts six months. You have to every six months you have to get uh, tested yeah, again. Now for drug for enhancement drugs, you know it doesn't. We don't really go through that in local shows because it's a, it's yeah. a lot of money they have to spend. Yeah, I I you know big shows like UFC and stuff like that they waste their money on that. Yeah, they you have, know, Usada um, it USADA, comes yeah. in and just you know it's been it's been killing everybody in the game now. <laughs> yeah, but um, well we do get tested for drugs like uh, any uh, marijuana, cocaine, any mm. other stuff. We do get tested. I'm getting drug tested in two weeks before the fight. Right before I go inside the cage, they're going to bring a cup and they're going to make me pee and they're going to test me. Like right before the fight? Yeah. Uh, before they oh. used to do it after. I don't know why they're doing it now before. So they're doing that now. Like the day of? Yeah, the day of the fight. The day of the fight, before I come out of the fight, like right, I'll say, I'll say in the middle of the card, the, the, the commission is going to come with a cup and it's going to tell me to go pee on the cup and they're gonna test it right in front of me have you known anybody that's uh that's had to cancel a fight the day of because of that no they let them fight oh they they, they let them fight yeah if i'm not wrong it happened in Titan fc not so long ago where a guy tested positive but like i said i don't know okay my first title fight i got tested after the fight when i came out of the cage and it took a long time because i was very dehydrated so i had no mm. urine mm. so i had to drink a lot of water and wait till that really goes down and it mm. was barely i barely was able to pee I was very dehydrated. I went five rounds, you know, so I sweat oh, a lot. And yeah, I didn't yeah. have any water on me, in me. And uh, the second time I fought, they did it right before it. So I don't know how the heat got caught with weed. Um, they, they said it was with weed. So I don't know <laughs> if it was right after wow. or it was before. I don't know if it was before like me and they let him fight because they should have, they, they got to be able to, if they did it before, they would see that he was dirty. So yeah. they, they, they let him fight knowing that he was dirty. I don't know. Yeah. Um, That's crazy. something that, um, actually the other day I went, um, you were there, I went sparring, mm -hmm. um, and, um, and I was sparring with, 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 um, with this kid and he, he kept on, so I kept on, uh, connecting with jabs or whatever the case. And, uh, you know, I would tell him like, Hey, you got to move your head, you know, you got to try to dodge, dodge the, the hits. And he'd be like, no, no, no. I have a phobia of getting hit in the face. So I need to get hit in the face. And I'm like, I have no problem hitting you in the face, but you also have to fucking dodge. Mm -hmm. Like you, you can't, I can't just like abuse you. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a very common thing. Nobody wants to get hit in the face. Mm -hmm, of course. How do you, how do you try to get your students to get past that? And how do you get past that? Well, first in a fighting, you have to accept it. You mm -hmm. will get hit in the face. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, well, this is part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, of course you want to teach them not to get hit in the face. But if you see he has a phobia, you're supposed to face his phobia so you could get over them. You know what I mean? Mm. So I'm not a fan. I've seen people, especially a lot of people that start the game, they think that they, that shows them toughness. Mm. Oh, hit me. I don't care. Yeah. But you're going to get you, injured. Certain people, one, yeah. You're going to get hit one time and you're going to wake up. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. You're going to be like, yeah. oh, what happened? Oh, you, you got hit. Yeah. You know what I <laughs> mean? So I wouldn't recommend it because at the end of the day, there's trauma to the brain. Why are you going to get hit? Yeah. Your, your, your brain is rattling inside your skull. So yeah. there's no reason to really be doing that. But it could, but it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen no matter what. If you train with great people, they're gonna hit you in the face. Speaking of, how do you? Um, different trainers have different methods. Um, how do you train yourself to be in that moment of getting of getting rocked? Um, you know, how do you experience that before the fight to be able to train yourself to know what to do when it happens? The, you know, I've been blessed that in training I've never really been rocked. Okay, I say I've been. I'll say when I first started, I did get a little dazed a couple of times, but okay. as I got better and better, I just, not, it doesn't make me uh, invincible or nothing like that. It's just for some reason, I just never been really rocked and sparring that much. 
But uh, the one, the few things that you could actually uh, drill is um, dizzy, getting dizzy. I remember when I was younger, we uh, they we they used to we used to do this drill where you spin and you mm. get dizzy and then you gotta spar. Yeah. So you're kind of like a little rock because you you know you are dizzy, you're a little wobbly. So that's kind of like the closest thing. But I don't do it that often because it sucks. I don't like being dizzy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. For sure. For sure. I was gonna ask. Um. So how often? Because I feel like he has, or maybe you haven't. Who knows? How often do you use your fighting as a way to get like? Laid. Like, do you tell women, <laughs> what's up, mommy? You know, I, I fight. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I do this. So, I can like, defend you. I you know, can protect I can, you. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's simple. It's easy. <laughs> you, know, you know, being very honest, I don't know if it's my appearance, but people know I'm a fighter. Like, girls know okay. I'm a fighter. Like, they always tell me, like, they look at my tattoos, especially when you see my KOs. I mean, okay. Like, yeah, when you're a boxer, that's the first thing they ask me. Okay. They okay, never ask me if I'm a, And when they look at my ears, they're like, oh, you're a wrestler? So, Word. Okay, okay. right away, I say yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know. Like, yeah i read some professional fighter you know <laughs> so what's up, what's up? Yeah, exactly <laughs> that's funny dude that shit i'll be using that all the time i all swear day. to you they, all, they always fighter. come up to me they're like you look like a fighter you do that and i'm like yeah yeah you know sure. so i use it like that but i don't bring it up as much you know okay. they just bring okay. it to me and I, 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 I say yes word okay okay no shit i can see that <laughs> <laughs> something that we didn't really get into last time that we um that we spoke was i guess a little bit of your background your family background um mm -hmm. where you come from maybe you know your parents we didn't really get into that um were they are they supportive of uh your career choice give me a little bit of uh your background um from okay. colombia and you know your growing up well i was born in queens new york okay i lived there with my mom till like i was uh, well i lived in new york till i was five and then we moved to miami we were here for two years when i was seven she sent me to colombia to go meet my dad Okay. And then when I went over there, I I liked it, you know. I I was a kid, you know. Kids don't know better, you yeah. know. So I thought it was cool. I was having fun in Colombia. And I told my dad, I want to stay here. I want to live with you. And my dad had to call my mom and, and tell her that he wants to live with me. And I stayed there for seven years. I went to school from first grade all the way to seventh grade. I got what, to, what part of Colombia? Uh, Bogota, Bogota, uh, Kennedy, and Kennedy Bomberos y, Bo y Ayacucho. Rep, rep, those are rep. places that those little neighborhoods I lived in, and uh, then they sent me. Then they sent me over here so I could meet my 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 sister. My uh, cause I I remember when I was little. I remember my sisters and my brothers. But you know you're little, you know. So yeah. I wanted to meet them again. My mom by the time he left to Canada, so it was just me and my brother, my brothers and sisters. And my oldest sister, she's like seven years ahead of me, older than me. So when I got here, um, we we were just me and my sisters bunch of teenagers living in living together you know it was uh, we had a lot of good times but we had a lot of ups and downs because it was there's no rules there's yeah. no there's nobody there to really you know uh there's no there's no parent still there's no there's, there's no, no discipline. discipline yeah so we we had a lot of fights you know don't get me wrong we love each other now you know yeah. but we went through a very rough time growing up you know what i mean um i ended up leaving the crib like around 16. Okay. And I end up living with my cousins. Uh, then I end up uh, leaving my cousins, and then I end up starting to like, live alone. I started paying my own rent. I hopped around. I lived in a lot of different places. I I lived with a lot of friends. Mm. You know, you rent a room, you rent a living room, you you have a spa in the couch, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Until you know, so now that I have my own place and everything. Um. Then I run. Uh, I dropped out of school at sixteen. Yeah, I dropped out of school at sixteen. I was having bad grades. I was just, I was just doing bad stuff. You know what I mean? And you know, like I said, you know, growing up the way I grew up, I was a little rebellious. I was in the streets a lot, meeting bad people. What was your favorite subject in school? Math. For real? Yeah, I'm good at math. Wow. Math is math and art. Okay. Oh, dope. Um, what well, you would paint or? Yeah, yeah, we were doing paintings, but I, I, like I said, once I was in ninth and tenth grade, like I, I was doing a lot of stupid stuff. And I know you, you know? were also into chess, right? Yeah, I, I used to I used to play a lot of chess, but that was in Colombia. That was ne that was never here. Okay. Uh, when I got to, I went to chess school and everything. Oh I was, shit! I was the best at chess over there Damn. until I met the clock. That, Once they put yeah. that clock, I because like, I take my time. Yeah. I'm, 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 I take my I'm time trying thinking. Trying to be father time, I very, boy. I was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was very good at it. Damn. But then um, then when I met the clock, I started losing. I, I lose to people that I was I wasn't supposed to lose. Yeah. But they tell you, oh, you want to get good at it, you have to think faster. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's how I, you know, I lost like that sometimes, you know. But I was, I'm very good at chess. I really love chess. And then, um, what else? 
no that you were saying uh when you were when you were back with your sisters here oh yeah then um then i'll tell you then uh around 19 years old that's when i i met an mma that's when someone showed me the ultimate fighter oh shit. it was so season, you started at 19 yeah, yeah it was season two it was season two or three it was ken shamra versus tito ortiz mm. they were both coaches in the show yeah the um, my first pay-per-view that i watched it was matthews versus Horace gracie yeah and i remember watching that and uh before i watched that i was watching the show and they were doing like countdowns for the pay-per-view and i watched Horace gracie beat up a lot of guys because there was old school videotapes and i was watching uh, Horace gracie beating up a lot of big people with yeah. jiu-jitsu so i was like oh i want to i want to join this i want to do this you know so that's how i started i started looking for schools uh i hopped around trying to find the right spot i ended up finding one and then uh it didn't really work out there and then i ended up leaving and then i ended up finding where my, my home is right now which is mma masters mm. i've been there for already about to go to 11 years oh wow that's so, dedication right there yeah yeah for real? there so uh, so i got there i got 21 and um i'm about to turn 33 so i'm 21 22 around that can't really give it a specific day. I know it was around June, July, around 2009, something like that. And that's how, then from there I turned pro and I, in the journey there. What was the, so the, when you started fighting, was it always with the intention of, no, this is what I'm going to do or well, I'm going to try this out, see no. if I like it? You know, when I was younger, uh, is is a very ambitious goal. I'm very ambitious about it but it's different because I already lived it for a decade. Okay. It's just different. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But when I was, when I first started, it was, it was something that is it's like unreal. It's like, a, it's just unreal. It's like, a, I really want to do this. I really believe I could do this. But I, it, it was different because I didn't know the game. I thought that you had to train for like 10 years before you get your first professional fight. I thought yeah. my first professional fight was going to be at 28, 29 years old. Then I realized, no, the game is not like that, you know? So, I thought it was my phone. Uh, so I thought, uh, I thought the game was, uh, I didn't know the game. I just didn't know the game. And then I realized, no, you just have to train and you were preparing. Then you could go pro at that time. There was no amateurs. Uh, there was amateur kickboxing. Amateur MMA was for literally, I could curse, right? Yeah, yeah. bro. You can say whatever the Amateur MMA was for pussies. Hey, so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> for so at that time, people would do amateur MMA and we'd look at them like, ah, oh, this guy's just scared to really get hit and yeah. get kicked with no shin guards and stuff like that. So I turned pro like around 22, and uh, that's how I started doing everything. That's beautiful yeah. right there. That's beautiful. Phil? That's crazy, though. 22? Bro, 22. That's intense. Have you, were you, um, like, because I know you said in Colombia you would fight with your brothers, but like in high school growing up or middle school here, were you like a regular fighter or not really? You know what? I fought more in Colombia than I fought here. <laughs> okay. You know, oh, yeah. uh, over here was different. Uh, mm. I would say I was a little intimidated to fight here. Not because I couldn't fight, just I didn't know anybody. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't even speak the same language that people, like some people, I, I got into arguments in, in, in middle school and high school, but I, I didn't even know how to, I didn't even know what the hell they were telling me. You know I mean? So I just knew they were arguing. I was just like, I'll just curse back in Spanish. I can sense you, know? you don't like me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can sense you don't like me. They were probably saying, fire. like, they were like, yo, I love you, bro. I yeah, freaking yeah. love you. Like, te amo, te amo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I found more in Colombia, bro. You uh, yeah. Growing up, you know, I, I grew up in the in the South. And okay. it was not a good neighborhood, you know what I mean? And okay. I grew up with that in the in the, playing in the parks, you know, soccer, playing marbles, you know what I mean? And, yeah. You know, just chilling in the park, you know. You know, you when you grow up in that, it was a, I grew up in a very very good home. Like mm -hmm. my my family is very uh, religious, mm -hmm. and my family is very uh, big in uh, manners and principles and all okay. stuff. But not in the streets. In the streets, when you're out there, it's just different. So there, you you. You want to be cool. You start doing stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, you started smoking cigarettes young. Started yeah. drinking young. I was drinking young, smoking cigarettes young. And then when I got here, things changed because um, at least over there, I feel guilty doing things because I didn't want my parents or my aunts to find out. Over here, I didn't care. So it, it became worse. I actually was in a, in a point where I was doing a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was doing a lot of drugs. I was doing a lot of messed up stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, my life could have gone a way different. different. Yeah. yeah. And I think I God put me in a, you know, gave me the, the, how do I say, wisdom to understand, like, yo, you just get out of this, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I had good influences too. I mean, I had bad influences, but I had good influences too. And little by little, I just got out of the stupid stuff, you know what I mean? And it's just, 
I'm doing better now. I'm doing great. You know, that's beautiful Good. right there. Um, what's something that, um, I guess during fight prep and also not during fight prep, I know you're, you, you have, you definitely have blinders on when, when it's fight prep, but, <laughs> um, but even then when it's not, what's something that, that motivates you in the morning? The, the mornings that maybe, you know, the night before you sparred and your body is sore as fuck and, you know, maybe you're not, whatever it is, you just don't want to get up. You don't want to do this. What's something, what that's, what's that thing that keeps you going? When you lose, when you lose, uh, you start thinking, do you want to feel that again? Because mm. that's really, I, I hate losing. I'm a sore loser. I'm mm. not going to lie to you. I'm a very sore loser. Like, I hate losing. Like I, The people that know me that saw me, seen me lose, I don't talk to them for like yeah. weeks. <laughs> I just, yeah. I, 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 bro, I just feel like shit. I don't like it. You know what I mean? I hate losing. I'm a, I'm a very competitive person. You know what I mean? So when I lose, that's one of the reasons why, like, it pushes me now to, like, uh, do better. Especially, I lost before where I believe I could have beat these guys. And I mm. felt like, damn, man, why am I losing to these guys? I'm more talented than these guys. I'm better than these guys. But it happens, you know what I mean? And especially when I was young. It happens, you know what I mean? So I'm in a different place right now. Do you study footage of uh, your losses? i seen them. I never saw my second loss. And neither my third. You know, but you don't need to see them. I felt them. You know, so, so you know where so I know what happened and I know what happened and I'm never going to discredit what they did but I know what mistakes I made you know what I mean and not just in the game it's just approaching the game too you know uh, you being young there's so many distractions that could happen going into a fight um, from girls to friends to, to, to family to jobs and to just all the bullshit the world could throw at you you know what I mean because mm. whenever you have something big that's about to come up the universe just throws obstacles yeah. And it's just to either break you or make you and that's that's how it goes. That is how Yeah, it goes. so how do you how do you like prepare for that? Cuz I feel like with with fighting training is are the physical thing is you're just telling yourself, mm -hmm. "All right, let's work out, let's do this." But when it comes to the day of the fight or the moment right before the fight, bro, things happen in life. You know, people pass away or friendships break mm -hmm. or we go through stuff. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I know fighting it has a lot to do with mental capacity as well. Like, yo, like you need to be focused. So, like, when things are going crazy in your life and you're about to fight, like, how do you train yourself to kind of block that out and focus on what you're doing? Experience. I don't think okay. I was able to do that early in my career. I think mm -hmm. now I'm able to do that because experience let me do that. Okay. You yeah. know, I took in, I took in one, two, I took in three breaks in fighting before. My first break, it was right after my first debut. It wasn't a break on purpose. It wasn't a purpose break. It's just that I... I found myself broke, and I found my in the sport. You know, you need you need money for the sport yeah. sometimes, and uh, I found myself. You know, I was broke. I was I didn't have money to eat. I wasn't talking to my family. I had problems with my family at the time. I even went down to one thirty eight pounds. I was one hundred thirty eight pounds. I was very skinny at one point, uh, and I don't walk around there. But that was because I was literally, you know, I was doing stupid stuff. You stupid know what I mean? Stuff, and yeah. Uh, yeah, at one point I was stealing tuna cans from CVS. I, read, I, would have a, I had a long sleeve shirt and I just go up pretend I'm buying something I just put it in, put it in. Oh, bro. Yeah, go sister. home and eat it hey y'all can call me the 10th yeah. man boy <laughs> I go home and eat it the second break I took it was an injury it, I had bursitis on my shoulder it happened me training with my friend uh, Paulo Fons I remember that we were both pummeling and all of a sudden I felt something so I was like alright whatever then uh, as I'm sparring with him I threw a right hand and I was like whoa something's wrong here Mm. I went to a doctor. They told me take some things. You just, have, you just have inflammation on your joint. So I took some weeks off, and I made the mistake that all athletes make. What is it? You go. You as soon as you feel better, you go back, and you mm. want to go hard, just like you used to. I went there, and then I was one time uh, I was uh, training. I was rolling with uh, my boy M Mitchell. Mm. He's actually the owner of Cumberland right now. Big Mitch. Exactly. Uh, and uh, we were doing, and he was putting me in a guillotine. I'm trying to get out hard from it, and then doing that. I hurt my shoulder again. And I was like, okay, whatever. The next day, I couldn't even get up from that shoulder. So that's when I had to take like six months out to, and then Jeez. the problem is when you take so much time off and like, this is fighting, man. It's hard to start it again. You know what yeah, I mean? To, to, yeah. to come back. Then I made a comeback mm. and everything was fine. Then I took my two L's in a row. I lost the title, uh, the fight time title against uh, Jason Suarez. We were fighting, he, he submitted me. I never been finished in a fight. This is the first time I ever, I never been finished in a fight. This is the only time I ever been finished. He guillotined me. 
and the fifth round. And after that, I remember I called my manager and I was like, yo, I want to fight again. ASAP. You know what I mean? But it was just very emotional. I should have never taken that fight. I was just very emotional. I just wanted to fight. I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't all there. I was just very emotional about that, about me losing. And I took a bad fight because I, I didn't perform like I should have. And I lost that fight too. And then never, I never lost back to back. So after that, I took another year and a half because I just, I told myself, look, at that time I was living in a, in a small bedroom. I was there for a year, for like five years. And mm. I wasn't happy. I'm not gonna lie, I was just wasn't happy. Mm. And then, um, then I started, then, uh, actually that's when, when I wanted to fight again. I just didn't have like something to like, spark me. And that's when I met Justin, one of my guys. Shout out yeah, to shout Justin. Shout out to Justin. <laughs> I met Justin and uh, how'd you guys meet? I met him because I actually uh, I was I had one of my students compete against him in a, in a I think it was Naga or New Breed. I don't remember where what, what competition was, and I was cornering against Justin. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> so after that, I remember he was upset. He didn't want to get in the podium, and I had to have like a talk with him. I'm like, bro, you don't. spoke with him? Yeah, yeah, I spoke to him because Damn. the thing is that my guy was in the he he got first place and he got second place. And I'm like, yo, um, get in the podium so you can take, pic- take a picture. He didn't want it. He was like, no, because I lost, you know, and he was just very upset. I'm like, bro, no matter what, like, you don't like your second place medal, then put it in the wall and refuse to have that again. You know what I mean? Look at it all the time and, you know, refuse mm-hmm. to get yeah. that again. Yeah. And then um, uh, I told him, look, if you're ever in Miami, just hit me up and we'll see if we could work something. And then uh, he hit me up like two weeks later. And then uh, we, we met. I took him to MMA Master. We trained. Uh, and then after that, we, we we became cool, and then I started coaching him. When I coached him, and he won his first fight, for some reason, I just like, yo, I want to fight again. And, you know, and, like, him looking up to me and him watching me, I kind of felt like I wanted to be that example again. You know what I mean? I, mm. And that sparked me again. It just made mm. me want to fight again. Yeah. It was weird, because, like I said, I wanted to fight. Just In fighting, you cannot fight just because it's a job. Because that's what happens a lot. Sometimes you feel it's a job. Sometimes mm. people, everybody will come up to me. But when you're fighting again, especially uh, half yeah. of my career has been yeah. main events. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, You know what I mean? So everybody's always like, oh, so when you're fighting again, when you're fighting, I'm like, yeah. oh, soon, soon. And I'm just saying that, but I, uh, just there's something there that's not letting me fight. And I was already comfortable. I already had gotten out of that room. I was living in a, where I live right now, in a, in a bedroom apartment uh, in a hotel. Mm-hmm. I live in New York Suites right now, in a bedroom apartment. I uh, I was good. I had and then my job where I work at Fight Club. I um, I uh, I I got a lot of classes and I I was making a lot of money. I was making good, so I was comfortable. And I'm like, okay, what's what's wrong? Well, you need to yeah. you need to wake up and go fight now. But I just didn't have that until when I started coaching and especially coach, like I said, I coached my first student, which was Justin. I um, I don't know. It just motivated me. You know, that's why I always give him a lot of credit for bring me back to the game what's the main difference when you fight uh and when some of your students fight oh man when i fight i'm good my student fights i'm taking a shit <laughs> i'm serious man i'm taking a shit bro yesterday my guys grappled six yeah. of them yep, yep six yep. and oh we went six and oh thank god baby that's a sweet baby that's a sweet took the broom out there you know <laughs> but man it's just grappling it's just jujitsu and i was nervous uh, especially um i don't want to you know i don't want to Sound like that because it sounds like it's favoritism, but you know, um, yeah, I spend a lot of time with like Richard and Justin, mm. which is all my two guys uh, that I work with right now. And since I spend so much time with them doing, especially what we do, because my other guys are just jujitsu, but with them I do MMA with them. I know they're 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 do, right now doing amateur mm. about you know they're eventually gonna turn pro. But I get very nervous, man, and sometimes I have to calm down because I'm the I'm the leader. I'm supposed to be the most composed person there. Yeah. I'm the coach too, so I'm, I'm supposed to be the, the most composed person there. But it's just I get nervous because I can't control what they do in there. You know? Yeah. I can't control what they do in there. But I want to. But when I fight, you could ask anybody. When I warm up, I'm dancing in the fucking locker room. I'm just chilling, dancing. Uh, ask my manager. He knows. I'm just there chilling. I'm, yeah. I, bro, you, you will never think I'm like that. You know, you think I'm probably like serious and, yeah. you know, which I had moments like that early in my career. There was moments that I, I didn't know. I, I, I I was like very nervous or very tense or very excited or very rowdy. I had, like I said, experience will let you eventually find yourself. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like way relaxed. I just, I just go out there and fight. What type of uh, music are you listening to before the fight? I don't listen to music. You said you were, when you're dancing, you're dancing to nothing? Nothing. Oh. 
That's I don't not, listen to music. Not I don't. I don't like music. To, <laughs> I don't like music to dictate my 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 my, my energy. Okay. Uh, because if you listen to pumping ass music, it's just gonna. It, I'll get so pumped up and then I'm tired in the fight. I'll be like, oh. I listen to like some heavy rock or some nasty rap. And lose I'm like, yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Oh no! If lose I listen to lose yeah. yourself, I probably had the fight inside the locker room. Already. <laughs> so when you come out, you're gassed. You know what yeah. I mean? Because it's true. And um, I don't listen to music. A lot of people do listen to music. I don't like listening to music. I just chilling. And I just have my own ways mentally how to like approach the game. Like yeah. I, I literally, I always tell people, I, I, there's a few things I always think about is death and getting old. Mm, yeah. The two things I always fear, my biggest fear. So what I do, I elevate my fears. So fighting is not a big deal. Yeah. Uh, speaking of dancing in the locker room before the fight, it reminds me a little bit of my main man, Tyson Fury. <laughs> um. Give me a little bit of a rundown about that fight, man. We watched yeah. that together. It was beautiful, yeah, beautiful, yeah. beautiful endeavor, a beautiful uh, exhibition of uh, ass whooping, <laughs> if I may say no, it so was, myself. It was. No, you can't deny that. It was. Um, I always say this. Skills over athleticism. Mm. That's what exactly what it was. It was a skilled guy. Mm. It was a very, very powerful athlete. People were talking shit about the weight. Mm. Um, well, wait, whose weight? Uh, well, even though he lost a lot of a lot of weight, Fury, but he still came in pretty heavy. Yeah, but that's who he is. You you yeah. can't go. You can't change who you are. You gotta fight with your best. You know what I mean. And if you're a guy that fights a little heavy, just fight like that. You know what I mean. Um. But what Tyson Fury? Like I always tell my guys, I'm, I always tell them this. I'm like, look, don't worry about working out so much. Like it's good to work out your body and get in good shape and look good. Everybody wants to look good, have a six pack and all that stuff. But if you don't know how to fight, that's what happened to Wilder. Mm. Wilder's a big puncher, but he's not a skilled boxer. Mm. Tyson Fury is a skilled boxer. Mm. Now I'll say, if, I'll say, if I, I'll say, if Tyson Fury had Wilder's athleticism, it's over. Mm. Best heavyweight in the world. Or if Wilder had Tyson Fury's skill set, best heavyweight in the world. You know what I mean? Even though right now Tyson is the best heavyweight in the world, but I'm just saying you'll be unstoppable. But that's the thing. That's what we are born with different uh, gifts. Yeah, 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 you know. Who you got in uh, AJ versus Fury? That's a very hard fight. Believe it or not, people are like, "Oh, AJ." No, 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 man. AJ is a nice athlete with some skills. I was surprised he lost against um fucking uh, what's his name, the Mexican uh, um, Alex Ortiz. Or, or, no, Orti no, 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 um, um, damn, Alex. Was it? No, is no, it no, Alex? Alex? No, 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 no. His name is. Uh, um, Ruiz, 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 yeah, Alex, uh, yeah, Ruiz, Ruiz. Um, there's rumors that he got knocked out weeks before the fight, and he probably and, and that 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 could happen. I seen it happen before. Mm -hmm. I seen teammates sparring. I seen teammates get knocked out before sparring, and they get knocked out in the real fight. It happens, you know what I mean. But I wouldn't go there. I think like I think AJ. Um, I think in boxing more than MMA, people tend to uh, put up fights that are like meant to for you to like elevate more and like look good. So the next fight will be a big fight, you know what I mean? Mm. And I think he probably lower him, lower his guard a little down. So then this guy came in and he wasn't playing. Mm. And it's just the same thing that just happened to him when they had the rematch. This guy didn't take AJ serious. He thought he, he was going to knock him yeah, out again. Yeah. And look what happened. AJ came in, I boxed him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah that, was, um, that was a nasty fight, bro. It was. It, <laughs> it was, was dope. That was dope. Did you have some? Um, no, well... When it comes to like things like that, um, do you learn? Do you take little pieces from different types of st or different styles of fighting? Because even you just said you were, you know, you train different styles, not just MMA. So like, you know, boxing for instance. There's well, no MMA kid. is all styles yeah. together. Oh, okay. it's all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. MMA is all styles together. Now the only thing that makes MMA different than styles is ground and pound. Because ground and pound is not okay. an art. It's something they became from wrestlers to punch people in the face while they were down. It's not an art you know, okay it, it, it's not like you go and you say oh they here they lead they, you learn ground and pound no but you got jujitsu you got judo you got capoeira you got kickboxing boxing you got uh taekwondo, taekwondo karate, karate whatever you okay. got just mix it up and get what is best for you you know um bruce lee says the best you know what i mean he says uh that um just don't stick to one thing mm. just see what see what fits you best yeah and grab it all and just put it to your you know arsenal and stuff are you big into fight predictions? If you could give a prediction of um, who, yours. Oh, yeah. Um, I want this to be under two rounds. Mm. You know what I mean? Not because I can't go five. I've been to fight twice. Mm. I know it's going twenty five minutes, and I want to go for twenty five minutes. It's very annoying. Yeah. It's very tiring. <laughs> yeah. 
out. No, it's true. It's oh, like, you understand? I get out and I'm. If I could get paid tired. the same for less time, yeah, yeah, bro, yeah. come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to be there for. Nobody yeah. wants to. What's that? You know, it's funny when you're. When you're watching fights sometimes and you see some crazy fights, like some great battles that you're a fan watching and you say, damn, I want to have a fight like that. <laughs> you know, for real. You yeah. want to say, you want the crowd to go crazy and you want to have those crazy bloody fights. But then when you really do have those kind of fights, you're like, oh man, this is not, I didn't like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Um, so but, I, two- but I'm, but I'm, I want to knock him out. Oh, yeah. But, a win is a win. I just, I need to win this fight. Yeah. I need that bell around my waist. So yeah. I don't really care if I don't knock him out. I'll submit him. If I don't submit him, I'll beat him by decision. But I gotta win this fight. Get that. Get that. Get that fucking belt. That's fucking beautiful. Um, what are um some of your inspirations? Like who inspires me or stuff? Like that? What? Yes. Uh, as far as uh fighting wise, um, and both on a on a personal note, and also on a on well. A, go ahead. My inspirations are one. My family, mm. you know, um, I grew up with, uh, I'm a family guy, you know what I mean? And that's why we, even with my students, I treat them like family because mm. I'm a family person. I don't go out as much. I just really like, I like Gettys with family. Yeah. We mm. always go to like Wing House and we have beer and we, and we watch fights together. It's just yeah. a good time. I like that good time with family. So like my, I have a lot of nephews and nieces. They're one of my biggest inspirations, you know what I mean? Um, have like little cousins. A lot of people look up to me and my family, especially the kids, because they think like you're like a superhero, even though you're not. <laughs> yeah. But they look at you like that. Uh, two, I'll say, well, let me just one number. Let me just say it because then it's going to be like, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, this is the first one. He's the second <laughs> one. Um, my students, and especially my guy, my, my, my guys that are like fighting too because yeah. I'm the coach and I'm rep- I, they, they're watching how to do this. Like they're watching me. And that was a little pressure I had in my last two fights. Cause I had like Justin and you guys, they're watching yeah. me. So, but well, Justin is in the locker room with me, you know. And like I said, he's he's a fighter, so he's gonna he's watching me how to do this, you know. And I'm trying to show it to him, show it, show him how to do this the right way, you know what I mean? And then you guys are in the crowd screaming for me, so yeah. All that pressure, like I need to win this fight, yeah. which is good. It's a good pressure, but at the same time, like you gotta know how to control it. If not, it could break you, cause then you get you get too too anxious and you're you just yeah. wanna like you wanna. Um, you want to do so good, you may make mistakes. You know what I mean? So, but that that inspires me a lot because I never been a coach. And when I started coaching, like I said, it's different because now they're looking up to you. They wanna they wanna see that what you teach them really works. Yeah. And I have to show it. You know what I mean? And really, just just man, I'm a competitive person, man. I say that I'm a competitive yeah. person, man. Whatever I do, I compete. You play soccer with me, I compete. You know that score goes we, on you we, all the time. Uh, that's all right. So that, listen, you should not. That's fake like, news, I'm ladies and gentlemen. That's <laughs> fake <laughs> news. I'm gonna tell we you, offer this. you a hundred percent factual, but that was fake news, and I gotta call it when it is. <laughs> For example, look, I'm gonna tell you this, and, and I have to, and I'm not gonna do it in this camp. I, I am gonna go play soccer because I always cut weight playing soccer. Got with to. Them. I always got play to. soccer. Come on. But goddamn, my last two camps, my last three camps, I play soccer with them, and I'm supposed to just run. Mm. You're supposed to just run so could cut weight, but then they start talking shit. Yeah, you know? we do, we do, we do, we do. <laughs> so I get very competitive. And I want to score, <laughs> and, and I start and I'm cutting <laughs> weight. <laughs> I start cutting. I'm cutting weight, so I'm a little light. I'm not. I, you know, you could pull a muscle, you could do something because yeah. you're light. And I start kicking the ball hard, <laughs> and and in two, t- three, all three times, I have messed up a little bit my groin, <laughs> with my right groin because yeah. that's the one I kick with. Yeah. So this time I'm gonna chill out. I'm gonna Shit. still. I'm gonna run, but I'm gonna have to make passes, man. I cannot be <laughs> kicking the ball so hard, man. You know, you know, uh, yeah. you know. You get scored. You <laughs> no, know. never, never. <laughs> I block every single one of them. <laughs> um, speaking of uh, other sports, were there, was there ever any uh, point in your life where you thought that uh, it could have not been fighting and maybe like soccer or something else? Did you ever consider anything else besides fighting? Uh, no. You know what's funny? When I was, uh, I remember this. When I was a, a little kid, I was like 13 years old and I was in Colombia. And like I said, I used to fight a lot. And it, fighting was like a cool thing because, you know, you start making your little cliques yeah. in Colombia. You have like a group and you're like, you know, represent. I forgot what we were called. Nah, I can't really remember what that was. <laughs> La Pandilla, I forgot. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, we used to fight a lot. I used to win a lot of those fights. So I thought I was a badass, you know? Mm. And growing up, watching Dragon Ball Z, you know, hell yeah. my favorite cartoon, you know? Yeah. BBC. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> and um, watching all that, I, I remember telling my brother one time, my brother Will, 
uh, Willy. No, I don't want to call them Willy. Willy. Uh, I remember telling him one time on the phone, I'm like, damn, I wish this was a sport. You know what I mean? Because the, it wasn't a sport at the time. It was, uh, when I was in Colombia, 13 years old, I would say I was what? It was like 1998, 99. Okay. So yeah, probably UFC was out there, but it was not known in Colombia. I didn't even yeah. know that. It was just, oh, boxing was the only combat sport. For some reason, I always liked the kicks and all that stuff. And uh, later on, like, you know, it is a real sport. Of course. And I was able to do it. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, give me a little bit of a rundown as far as your uh, partnership with your management. Mm -hmm. um when did you guys get together how did you guys uh meet how how this uh partnership come to be uh you know one time uh, i was gonna fight for i was gonna f was it with jason first or was it with john de jesus and we yeah. got the manager okay, in the okay. studio yeah, by yeah, the yeah, way you know my boy right here antonio, come on, right? antonio shout my out to right antonio <laughs> come on <laughs> I remember Antonio came to him in Masters and the coaches told me, oh, look, he's a, he's a manager. He wants to manage people. I talked to him and see what's up. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. He goes, I just yeah, want to manage yeah. you. <laughs> so I remember um, I met him and no lie, I just, I don't trust managers. Mm. Uh, I don't trust, you know, it's not that I don't trust them. It's just that at, at that time in the game, there was a lot of fake managers, mm. phony managers. Yeah. You know what I mean, they'll go and they, 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 they promise all these things and they don't do it, yeah. you know? And so I was very skeptical with him. Okay. He, you know, I was very skeptical with him. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. But I was like, you know what? The coaches were like, you know, he's good, this and that. I'm like, okay, let me give it a try, you know. And he's been great, you know. And, you know, what made, what made me more realize even more about, about Antonio was that I only gave him a W at the time. I mm. gave him two L's after that, you know. And managers, yeah. when they see you kind of like losing, they start moving to like another yeah, good fight or something. He never left. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's always talked like to me. Loyalty. And, you know, he always you know talked that? to me, and and not only that, he stuck to me after the two L's. Remember, after those two L's, I took a year and a half almost break, and yeah. he still believed in me. That's what I mean, dope. so you know, that's why we're here, boy. Come on, that, that loyalty we're doesn't here. go unrecognized. Yeah, you know? of course not. I'm a loyal guy, man. I'm that's one of my biggest things. Uh, loyalty to me is huge. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, so yeah, that's why I'm I'm I've been with him since since what was it, 2015. We've been here for already five years already, yeah. right? Yeah, 2015. Yeah, yeah. We've been together for 2015, and it's been great things, man. You yeah, know? and he knows that later on, I was like, you know, like I'm I'm turning 33. Mm. You know what I mean? Got a few years left, mm. but after that, we're still gonna be, you know, we're gonna be boys. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? of so course. It's not gonna be business no more. Eventually, at one point, we're just gonna be boys. You know what I mean? So we're so gonna so be friends beautiful. till till we die. Um, what is your um, UFC? Is that on the horizon? Uh, what's your Give me a little bit of uh, of a rundown. Is that the end game? Is that the goal? Um, that's everybody's goal. That's everybody's goal. Yeah, that's everybody's goal. So if, you, if your if your goal is not to go to UFC, then what's your goal? If your goal is to make money, then you know. If my goal is to make money, we would have gone somewhere else. Because my my man, you could have taken me anywhere else. Yeah. He he told me we could go here, we could go there. They pay more than that, but I just wanted to go to the UFC because, like I said, when I was nineteen years old, that's what I that's saw. That's a dream, right? And there. that's when it made me get into the sport. I was like, I want to go to UFC. I know I got what it takes to be there. Because if it was to about making money, we would have gone anywhere else. We yeah, could have gone. Like Bellator we, or yes, something, anything. something else. Yes. We could have gone to any of those shows. We we could go to any of those shows. It's just that I don't want to go to UFC. And oh, that's yeah. what we're doing right now. And that's why these fights are important. I need to win this fight. Setting yourself up for um, pretty much the best of the best. Yes. Can't have anything less. No. Um, Il? How do you get into that? Like, how do you... Like, is it like a tryout? Like Everybody what? has a path. I, I know um, Danny, Danny that goes, uh, you know, Danny, he, he goes to the gym sometimes, a wrestler, um, buddy of mine. Um, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. your boy, your boy, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he, he goes, uh, uh, a lot of people wonder that, like, some mm. people that have passion for it, train for it, maybe they did wrestling in high school or mm. whatever, how would they go about, quote unquote, getting started? Well, he's good because he started with wrestling, so he started with something. I started with nothing. Mm. I just started with jiu-jitsu, then, I, then uh, in jiu-jitsu, I, I started wrestling and doing jiu-jitsu, so I started grappling, then I moved on to kickboxing, I let go of, I had faces, I had at one point, I was just a jiu-jitsu guy, like, I was just grappling, 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 but then I did wrestling, because I started losing grappling matches because of wrestling, mm. so I started wrestling, 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 because like I said, I don't like losing, so then I became a great grappler, but then what about them hands, what about them kicks, you know, and I was doing everything, but it's just like, you have face, like, for example, I, uh, I would kickbox here and there and spar, but I was mainly grappling, you know what I mean? Mm. And then all my boys started kickboxing. I was like, you know, I want to do that more now. <laughs> and I let go of grappling. I started kickboxing. I did three amateur kickboxing. I went 3-0. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, and then, but I eventually knew I was going to do MMA. I knew that's what I wanted to do. And that's, it. that's how I started. I just started, I started doing MMA. And, and so once you're already kind of in that circuit, um, it's, it's pretty much uh, management that would kind of set that up. Yeah, you know, I feel like last year I made a, I don't want to say I made a mistake, but I, 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 I stay cold in the game. I should have stayed a little bit more busy. You know what I mean? I, um, you know, it is what it is. Mm. I'm not going to say regrets or anything like that, mm. but I think I should have stayed a little bit more active last year. And I think I lost a couple opportunities probably because it was, it was my fault. Mm. Nobody's fault. Okay. It's my fault. You know what I mean? But that's what, like I said, now I'm, I'm doing everything I can because mm. Like I said, uh, the clock is ticking, yeah. and I'm not getting younger. The clock is ticking. When you have performances on the other end of the spectrum, uh, as far as like being a coach, like you did yesterday, where you you sweep, you know, all six year students get the dub. Um, does that um, have the people there acknowledge the fact that not only are you a phenomenal fighter, but you're establishing uh, yourself as a coach with a performance like that. Is your name also being attached? Yeah, to... so people give me props for it. But you know what? At the end of the day, I don't like really taking so much credit as a coach. No? I li- no, because I feel like the guys are doing their job too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like uh, I don't like to take all that credit. I don't like doing that. And I've never been a cocky person about that. You know what I mean? I'm cocky about fighting. You know? I'm cocky to my opponent. That's mm-hmm. about it. I'm not here to be cocky in life and be like, oh, you know, I'm the greatest coach. You, you achieved this because of me. No, 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 no. You put in the work. You have to sweat. You have yeah. to bleed. You have to cry. I don't do that for you. You know what I mean? I do my own. So, so you know, like, um, eventually, I, I, eventually I do have plans of coaching, but, like, um, right now I'm more of a, like, I do coach. You know what I mean? You definitely do. And yeah, also, I, do I coach. Feel- but eventually, like, with my guys, I want them to be, I want them to be more like the leader of the pack. You know what I mean? Like, just follow me. You know what I mean? Just follow me. I'm going to show you the ways. You know, it's different with you with with the jujitsu my jujitsu students because yeah, I I am more of a coach, but with my other guys that do MMA, I try to be more of a leader. Like follow sure. me, let me show you the ways. Because eventually at one point I'm still fighting and eventually we could actually fight the same day or the same week. What's gonna happen when I fight the same week that my students are? I won't be able to coach them. I won't be able to be there for them. But I train them not to need me. Yeah. You know what I mean? How much of it how much of um as like your coaching role also involves um <clears throat> being there for them um through through hardships through the regularities of of life and the, you know the turmoils of life and um and not only having to do with fighting but you know mm-hmm. um just because i'm already thinking of a some, you know something that happened or whatever you know when, when someone dies or whatever mm-hmm. you have to be there for them yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um actually there's the best part to me, at the end of the day, you know, anybody could make a great fighter, but can you make a great human being? You know mm. what I mean? Can you, can you make a great human being out of that person? Because, like I said, I was not that greatest human being either when I was younger. I've always been a, a, a great person. I always have a good heart. But I had some dark moments in my life where I was a dark person. You know mm. what I mean? And I think it's more, there's a more accomplishment for me to help you to be a better human being than being a better fighter. I feel like being a better fighter is, Six skills and time and all that stuff, but human being is in the mindset, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mental. I don't want to say what was, it, what was the word I want to use. Um, you know, life is all about the way you think and stuff like that. Yeah, how your you perspective. Treat, yeah, how you see, view things. So I talk to my guys a lot. Actually, you could even ask them. I always have conversations about life with them more than than fighting. We talk about fighting a lot, of course, but I talk way more about life because that's what's gonna get you to that. You know, if you don't have a great view of life, you're not even gonna you're not even gonna reach your goal. Yeah. So what's the point? You know, what was the point of just teaching them fighting? Them? I'm not teaching them about life. Yeah. You know. I'm gonna put you on the spot real quick. We normally have a uh, segment here called Craig's Movie Reviews, but Craig isn't here today because we're actually <laughs> setting up for our No Labels event later on today. Um. So, uh, Danny, give me a movie. That a, I, that a I movie, like a movie, a movie that you gotta recommend to the masses, or not recommend. It could be a movie you hate. Yeah, it could be a movie like, you yeah, hate. It could down, be thumbs watch. up or thumbs down from Danny. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm a, Danny, I'll be very. Danny's honest. movie review. <laughs> Danny. Danny's movie review. Okay, the only movie I ever seen three times in a movie theater. <laughs> oh shit! Okay, oh, I know exactly what movie. Oh, wait, is this a recent? Is this I know? 
Joker. I knew it. Nice. I knew man. it. Hey, man. The funny thing is, hey, I also bro. saw it three times in For the movie theater. For real? I saw it yeah. three Crazy. times in the movie theater. I've never seen a movie in the movie theater. Oh, yeah, I've seen Shit. twice. I've gone twice to a movie theater to see other movies, but mm. three times, Joker. And uh, of I course, I remember, I was in drama when I was in high school. At least you mm. didn't say so, Aladdin. We saw Aladdin <laughs> together, bro. He was like, it's amazing. I was like, she's whack. Bro. <laughs> Got it. The Lion King was fire, bro. Lion King was <laughs> Lion fire. King. He hated it. Yo. He hated it. I did. I, was like, I did bro. not like the the new one. 1917 like was cool, but I the, you yeah. know, I had a little problem with that movie, but whatever. But um, it, there's a lot of great movies out yeah, there. Yeah. I love Man on Fire. I love uh, Forrest Gump is one of my favorite movies of all Forrest time. Really? Okay. Uh, I have a lot of great. I have, there's a lot of movies I like. Saving Private Ryan. Of there's it's a lot of great movies, yeah. but the Joker. Um, I think the reason why I like the Joker the most because I didn't give it a chance, mm. and when it shocked me the way how good it was, yeah. I was like, "Oh, I gotta see this again." Oh, you thought it was yeah. gonna be whack? I told you, yeah, yo, you yeah, kept yeah, telling, yeah. you kept telling yeah, me, "Oh, be, be, yeah. be positive, bro. It's gonna be good." Because yeah. I didn't look. I remember. Heath Ledger did, yeah. Heath Ledger did such a great role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I didn't think nobody was gonna beat that. Mm -hmm. And then Joaquin Phoenix comes and kills him, man. Yeah, like, you think he was and, better? And I like. It's different because the thing is that. In the Heath Ledger one, he was um, he was become he he showed you the steps to become the Joker. I mean the Heath Ledger. The Heath Ledger was already the Joker. Joaquin Phoenix was the steps of becoming the Joker, mm -hmm. so it was different. Yeah. And I think the reason why I liked the, this Joker the most because it it showed a little bit what really is going on in life with mental yeah. illness and with society mm -hmm. and because there's a lot of there's a lot of hate out there. Man. There's a lot of greed. There's a lot of selfishness out there. There's a lot of there's a lot of sh nasty shit happening out there in, yeah. the, in the world. So. It looked like I like the fact that they highlight it, you know what I mean? And and it was it was a weird movie. It's a mix of emotions. Because for example, there's a scene where where he gets he gets punched in the face, but he thinks that Bruce, uh, this guy, uh, Wayne, the, uh -huh. is his dad. Is his dad. Yeah. yeah. And he punches him in the face. And I'm like, oh, what a piece of shit. You know, a poor guy. You know, uh -huh. he's there like thinking you're his dad in this. But then he tells him, touch my son again and I'll fucking kill you. And I was like, oh shit, I forgot. It's true. If I had a son and you have a stranger come and touch my son's kid, yeah. I'll fucking punch you in the face. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, whoa, yeah. whoa, who side am I in? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And at the end, I was more sympathetic with the Joker, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, but then I understood why it was just crazy. It was a crazy movie. I I I like it because, man, like I said, mental illness is real. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't get that. A lot of people think it's a joke. You know what I mean? And it's not, you know. What's in your mind is what really could dictate your whole life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, you gotta you gotta have good influences. You gotta have good role models. You gotta have parenting. All those things don't don't have a lot of people don't grow up with good parenting yeah. or good influences and none of that stuff. And and you have problems yourself. You born with you're born with things that you know, you're gonna born, you're gonna be born with flaws. Mm. You know what I mean? So that's why I really like that movie. I really, really like that movie. How do you um manage to um if let's say let's like uh there's someone in your group of students um it doesn't have to be your direct mm -hmm. um you know group of students that fight with no you no it could be from from or any, overall, or overall 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 yeah. any of, I have a lot of students bro i have a yeah, class on yes. monday with 75 people yeah yeah, you know yeah. Mean? so oh, jesus yeah yeah, yeah so <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? um i do feel like there's like a deeper connection with like a uh when there's a craft such as like jujitsu that there's a lot of like you know interaction yeah, yeah, yeah. it was very it's very close quarters um whereas something like a cardio boxing yeah you don't different. have to talk to the person next to you no but i do talk to everybody i'm very no, social yeah, yeah. i'm very social and i talk to all my students you know what i mean but but jujitsu is martial arts it's just a different sport because i did boxing and boxing doesn't really bring that boxing you 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 talk to people but jujitsu you talk about life and mm. doing the right things and um you know like i said you gotta be an example and all those things help me out to be a better person. So what I was going to ask, when you have so many uh, students or classes or whatever the case, how do you manage to, when there's someone who um, doesn't have that same drive, that same uh, good attitude about stuff, maybe someone that's negative, um, how do you manage to, to, to take care of that? Do you leave them in the class? Do you talk to them? Do you not talk to them? Do you kick them out? What do you... No, I talk to them. Yeah. But also, if you mess up, mess up, I'm going to kick you out. Um, I, don't to, I don't need... I want to say, like, you know, you give chances to people, but it gets to a point where you're like, okay, what's going on here? You really don't. But like I said, I talk to them. I talk, especially about life. Like I said, I like to talk to them about life and, you know, be humble and do all these things, you know, because, you know, those things were taught to me too by my coaches. My coaches have always been there. Uh, my coaches have always sat down with me and talked to me about life. Very wise people. You know, my coach, Cesar Carnero, he's a 
around his 50 years old and mm. uh, and uh, he's been through a lot too and my other coach uh, daniel Valverde, he's 43 years old and uh i hope they're giving the right ages yeah <laughs> uh, i'll shave a couple off yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh and uh they talked to me about life too and like i said i did have a uh, people older than me that they were good influences to and they talked to me you know and that's how you do you talk to you talk to people when you see that there's a problem or there's something wrong now you cannot try to force them to do things you just could guide them mm. if they don't want to follow there's only you could do there's only so much you could do mm. um what what's uh for the people to know what's your favorite meal and I know, I know it's different though, because when you're so fighting and you're two, cutting, two yeah. different meals. So favorite yeah. feel, well, so favorite meal off fight prep, there we go, and favorite yeah. meal on, while fight prep. Yeah, yeah, because I know it's gonna okay. be two different. Completely yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, junk food, anything yeah, like you want. Meal, like, like, okay, okay, I'll be very honest, man. I lo- there's two things I like as a like junk food. I love McDonald's. Okay. The fr- the fries, or fire, uh, especially fire and the nuggets, of course. McDonald's. Yeah. I everybody knows Danny is a yeah. pig when he's McDonald's. He does. And pizza, of course, you can't pizza? go wrong with pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, bro, you gotta see one of the movies. <laughs> I, bro, one time he was like, "Oh, Jobin gave me like twenty burpees or something," and I was like, "Oh, how about I just give you twenty bucks?" And then he was like, "Oh, you gotta buy my stuff at the movies." And I was like, mm, "Nah, fuck that. I'll do the burpees." <laughs> we go to the movies, bro. He gets like a whole thing, bro. Oh like popcorn. God. The whole thing, I was like, yo, I'm glad I, I did the, the burpee. The hot dog, the candy, the 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 soda, the yeah. the, 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 the nachos, and oh the popcorn. Oh my god! Yeah, I go I go savage when yeah, I go to the movies. He goes yeah. savage. Nah, that's why I don't go to movies right now because I can't eat them. That's <laughs> like, and you, when you go in, you smell the popcorn. You're like, oh, I want to yeah. buy you something, but you can't yeah. really eat it. So I, I haven't gone to the movies for that reason. If I do, <laughs> I'm gonna have to eat before I go in there because yeah. you do get hungry when you go to the movies. Yeah, true. And while I'm in camp, I really, you know, I eat anything, but I'll say they. If, one of my favorite things to eat is a uh, is a soup. It's called sopa mondongo. Mm, yeah, it's, I see, yeah, it's tripe soup. And okay. for some reason, I love tripe soup. Yeah. Mm. Yes, and of course, uh, regular. You know, you like churrasco. You like for you sure. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I like I like uh, red meat more than chicken or or fish or anything like that. Um, ceviche is another thing I really love. Actually, okay. I'm gonna eat that tonight. You know, <laughs> Write this down. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> put this down real quick. Yeah, I might eat ceviche tonight. Um, sure. But I eat anything. I got. I don't really have. Uh, I want to say I don't. Well, I grew up eating almost everything, man. I eat yeah. all vegetables, all fruits. Uh, very probably you have one here and there I don't like, but yeah. I eat almost anything. I hate olives, black oh, olives. Oh, okay, yeah. Disgusting. But you know what? Black olives and pizza is fire. I can't. Dude, black olives and pizza is fire. Dude, you know? Oh about. God. <laughs> <laughs> Or um, pineapples on pizza. Oh man! Oh, you what? Know how people do it. I don't Hawaiian know pizza. Do it. Oh, oh, fire! <laughs> fire, <laughs> dude! No. Um, <laughs> if you were stuck on a deserted island mm. and you could only have three items, uh, what would they be? Ooh, damn! Three items. Whoa! I'll say. Damn. I have a boat so I can get out of the island. <laughs> God damn, yeah, I want to get out of the island. No you know loopholes. I mean? I don't be stuck no loopholes. There. <laughs> no loopholes. I say, uh, you need some entertainment. So I say, uh, TV or cell phone. I'm a very TV person. I, yeah. I watch TV a lot. I watch sports a lot. Okay. So I need some type of entertainment. Okay. Um, like a little someone TV. there, a female. You know, okay. I need, I need hey, someone hey, there. What hey, am I gonna hey. do by myself? Right, What's wrong yeah. with you? I need you to get bored real quick. I need to do my thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, I don't want you to be like cast away. Yeah. Cast you know what I mean, like, be over here with Wilson and stuff. Like, <laughs> nah, man, chills. You know. What I mean? <laughs> and uh, I'll say, damn, the third thing, because in the island you could find food. They say you find yeah. coconuts and crabs and you eat that stuff. So they say food, not food, uh, just items. Yeah, TV. A girl, and I'll say, "Damn, let me see. What would be the third? No, because the TV will be music, so you could use that as a ready. Um, M- MMA gloves. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm gonna spar with her. Like, I, who am I gonna spar with? You know what I mean? Who am I gonna spar you with? You know that small, the, the, the dude, that dude that can make weight. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, oh, oh fuck Donald up. Bush. No, no, but that would be bare knuckle. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I won't even put gloves on that. I'll bare knuckle that guy. You know what I yeah. mean? Um. A third one. I don't, I really can't think of a third one. I think those two are good enough because I find food in the island. You know so you yeah. keep the third one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know um, what? The third one will be a wish. I don't know. There you <laughs> go. Uh, speaking of bare knuckle, I know that you recently went to a bare knuckle event. I think you were to mm-hmm. support a friend of yours. Two of my um, friends. Okay, awesome. We're um, fighting each other, which I hated. Oh, shit. Because they're now they're going to the semifinals or finals, I think. 
Okay, so give me a run. Would you ever do bare knuckle? How was the fight? Was it the first time you went? What's up? Yeah, it was the first time. Actually, it was pretty cool. I I I never been a fan of the bare knuckle thing. Okay, you know what I mean. I thought it was stupid, and I still think like me as a fighter I wouldn't do it because my friend won his fight, Jim Allen. Shout out to Jim Allen. Shout out. And but he man, he messed up. Both of his hands look like MMA gloves. Yeah, I saw that. Shit. Both of his hands look like MMA gloves. So I think about it. I'm like, yo, I could be out for another six months to a year, probably if you break a bone there, yeah. you know. So how do they, how are they, so now they're going to fight again though? No, no, no. Yeah, they also, they, my friend, Luis Palomino, Baboon, shout out to Baboon too. Uh, he fought, he won his fight. Jim won his fight, so they're going to meet. Mm. And I hate that, because it's two of my boys. Yeah. And one of them is a very good friend of mine, the other one was a guy I used to look up to. You know yeah. what I mean? Baboon I used to look up to, Baboon. That was my big brother. Yeah. You know, he's still a big brother to me. Yeah. Um, Jim Manis is just like a friend of mine, very good, yeah. very close brother too. So... It sucks to see them fight because I don't like to see that. I don't like seeing both of my friends fight. I just, I'm just gonna lay back and watch and mm. don't really have a. F- and, but it happened before. I seen this happen, you know, before. I had friends that fought other friends because you have you you build. I build a lot of friendships in my gym, but then they don't. It doesn't work out for everybody in the same gym, so they move to another gym. But then you build another friendship in that gym, and then he's gonna fight that guy. But because they don't know each other, they don't have a friendship. But I do have friendship with both of them. So it sucks when you have to see them fight together uh, against yeah. each other. It just sucks. Have you or would you fight a friend? No. It depends. I'll say for a UFC title, yeah. You know why? We both had the same goal. Dream, yeah. I'm sorry, but outside of that, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want I don't I wouldn't want to punch. I would look, you understand that when you win, such a glory great moment. You know, it's all you get all the glory. When you lose, you're miserable. And I wouldn't want to give people misery. You know what I mean? Especially I don't want to give my friends a, a miserable moment. But a UFC belt, man, why would we pause this moment, right? Why would we, why, why would we not do this when this was always your dream and this, this was, was always my wanted, dream? Yeah. And we have to understand that, you know, me, I don't have kids, but people got kids and they got to feed their kids and family. Me, I got my, my family, I, I, you know, I help my dad a lot and I help a lot of, you know, people a lot too, you know, so I've, I got to think about them too. And I got to think about myself. It's my own goal. It's my main goal. So, you know, only with that, it, it, it could only get only at that moment. Mm. Outside of that, for two thousand dollars, for eleven hundred, for for a regional title, nah, man, it's not worth mm. it. It's not worth no. it to lose a friendship because as much as you want to say you could be friends after that, you won't be. You don't. You think no, so? No, no, you. I, I, me personally, I won't. I probably won't be. It's funny because I've, I've been friends with people that I fought before, but I never mm. met them, so it was different. I guess like after you fighting them, you fight them is. It's easier to like build something, but mm-hmm. once you already had a friendship, you feel some type of way. I never fought a friend, so I don't know, but I know people that fought friends and they never became, they didn't stay as friends after that. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't want to do that because I do appreciate the friendships I, I build in this world. And is that, is that because, um, just because someone's going to be sour that they lost or because of the inevitable concussion? I just told you, I'm a sore loser. Yeah. yeah. So if I lose, if my friend beats me, I just don't know how I'm going to yeah. react to that, man. Yeah. Because this is fighting. I'm telling you, you're miserable. You don't yeah. understand. I Oh, you know what? I did fight a friend, but he wasn't my friend at the time. When okay. I fought Jason Suarez. Jason Suarez, me and Jason Suarez were cool. We were actually friends earlier in, in our lives. It's just that we, I, left the, I left the gym and he stayed in the same gym. And then we went different paths and we just kind of lost connection. And then we ended up being in the same organization, fighting for the same reason. You know, so I think, and then I, my goal was to win fight that for that belt and we fought it but we were not friends by that time we were not friends anymore like that so we ended up fighting and I lost you know what I mean and believe it after that we cool every time I see him I'm, I say what's up we, we're very professional but we don't get the same friendship mm. we don't and we won yeah I remember we ran into someone at the fair that you had fought with I don't know if that was him oh Joey man oh, okay Joey Rodriguez man uh, Joey was a, Joey, actually Joey was the first time I was ever nervous in a fight Mm. because Joey was the first time I ever had like some type of uh, small fame in Miami. I remember um, we were in the, we were in the featherweight tournament and Joey uh, was in the semifinals against me. We were supposed to be, in, we were set up to be in the opposite of the brackets because they wanted two guys from Miami to represent. But for some reason we ended up in the same bracket. So he won his fight, won my fight and we ended up in the semifinals to see who goes, who goes to the finals. Mm-hmm. So we fought, uh, but before that, uh, there was a lot of hype in, in Facebook. Their Instagram wasn't out there yet. It was Facebook, and everybody was like posting stuff like, "Oh, who you think is gonna win?" And there was a lot of drama. All my friends started commenting, and all his friends started yeah. commenting. And I started commenting. And he started commenting. And we just <laughs> built like a little rivalry. Yeah. Um, my fight before Joey, uh, his he had a crowd. I didn't. I, I never sold tickets. 
I I didn't like that stuff. I, I always focus just on the fight. I don't follow, I don't focus on the fame and the social media and none of that stuff. I started doing that later because I realized that it's it is important to be able it's to market yourself yeah. because if you want to make yourself something, you know, somebody you, you have to use it because that's the new ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. yeah. You gotta use social media. <clears throat> so we fought, and then he ended up coming to my gym. Um, later, he ended up you know joining the gym, and we built a great friendship, man. And it was fun because it was different. We used to uh, uh, rank on each other. Like he'll be like, I'll be like, he'll be tell me like, oh, but Danny. And he didn't want to stand up with me. He just kept taking me down. And I'm like, yeah, but get up, nigga. Like, you know, <laughs> get up if you got, you know, yeah. get up. You know, it's, yeah, it's yeah. your fault, not mine. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Nobody told you not to work on your wrestling jujitsu. <laughs> you know, I'm always going to win the fight where I think it's more easy for me to win. Why would I want to make it difficult for of myself? Course. Hell no. So, and, and we, built a, we, we did build a great friendship. Uh, he, to this day, I actually, uh, I think we talked uh, like a month ago. Oh, nice. No, not even. Two weeks ago, we talked. On the on Instagram, uh, no, I build. I look, man. I build great friendships with people. You know what I mean. You do. And even when I don't, even when I do have like follows with people, at the end of the day, right? Like it take it may take time, but I always try to fix it. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, not fixing the sense that we're gonna become friends again, but I don't want beef. Yeah, just no no reason for that. I think as I got older, I became uh, less um, grudgy and less. Uh, Became a better person, yeah. and I just really, I just don't, I just don't need. I think there's no need for for negative energy around you. Mm. Um, you've been at MMA Masters, you said for eleven years. It's about to go. Let me see. Like I said, yeah, it's about to go eleven years on June or July around there. So, what are some of the biggest differences you've seen from when you first started going and now? Uh, well, at the beginning when I first got there, you know, we were a small group, mm. and mm -hmm. it got bigger. You know, I was actually uh. I was actually one of the young guys. I was always training with a lot of the professionals, older guys, and they were beating the crap out of me. You know what I mean? I I used to get beat up a lot. You know what I mean? And that made me a great fighter now because now I beat up people. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I still get beat up. I still yeah. go to the gym and you still got a lot of great guys in my gym that yeah. beat me up. You know what I mean? And uh, and it's funny because I, I tell that to my guys when they when because I know sometimes they feel like they're they're being like used as like ragdolls probably. But I tell them, I'm like, man, I've been here, but that's what made me who I am. You know, I used to train a lot with these guys and they were monsters, killers. And you surround yourself with killers, you become a killer. Yeah, mm -hmm. I saw Justin posted on Instagram, a napkin full of blood. He's like, oh, mm -hmm. getting, getting Danny ready for his fight. I'm like, damn. <laughs> I feel so bad, man, because the thing is that he's helping me out a lot for this fight. I don't have softballs that much at the gym. I make people turn soft, uh, uh, go softball, but they don't, they're not natural at it. So their timing is a little off, their combinations, their movement. So he's been really not helping me a lot. And we were doing conditioning. And I'm getting tired in the conditioning, but he's making me work. And, you know, you start thinking about the fight. You want it so bad. You start thinking about the fight. And you just, you start throwing a little harder. And, you know, he really can't throw at me so much because he has to be, take care of me. He knows I have a fight coming up. He can't hurt me. So, yeah, I threw one punch, I think, at his nose. And I heard, I, I made him bleed. But it's all love. It's all <laughs> yeah, love. Yeah, it's all love. <laughs> it's the name of the game. Uh, Ill, you got something uh, before we start wrapping up? Um, how do you? Nah, man, never mind. Cause I, what? you guys are professional, so you guys. Cause if if somebody hit me and I was bleeding, I'd be pissed. Oh, like, like to keep it. Yeah, but yeah. get used to it. Yeah. No, I'm telling you. Well, yeah, look, you man. Um, if you can't, it's like you can't you can't get into cooking if you're not if you're afraid of cutting yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, because yeah, if you yo, if oh, I would have got hit, I, I want to cook, but I don't want to get burned. <laughs> Yeah, how's it gonna happen? You know I mean? exactly. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. You're right. You know what I mean, like, so you you gotta get used to that. You know, yeah. you gotta get ready for that. You know, what I mean? so you when you get into this, uh, it's okay when people get into it and they don't end up liking it mm. and they move on. That's yeah. fine. You tried it. You know what I mean, yeah, yeah. But if you're really in it and you're being doing it for, you gotta know that this is gonna happen. You know yeah, I mean? you could even get knocked out in, in practice. You gotta get ready for that. That's crazy. You know what I mean? And uh, it happens. I, I thank God it never happened to me. Is this wood? It's yeah. Some sort yeah. of wood. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's what for sure but yeah cause you never wanna get hurt before any fight or anything like that yeah, but yeah. yeah like um, you gotta get ready for it man you know you may not wanna get but it's like, this is what you wanna do you yeah. know what I mean it's like it's, it's like, it's, it, like yeah. it's like um, it's like uh, Eminem a mile. Yeah. you know you wanna freestyle you wanna go out there but you choked mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah you yeah, come yeah. back and you do it again but yeah. you, you can't get mad cause you choked it's like you gotta come back and do it again you yeah. know what I mean but you gotta get ready because oh, oh I wanna be a rapper but I'm afraid of audiences or i'm, mm. I'm like yeah, a you got stage, stage, fight. stage yeah. fight. no man you gotta you you, you gotta step up to that you know what i mean yeah. and yeah. we all gotta do that you know whatever we want to do that's what you gotta do oh yeah that's fucking beautiful speaking of eminem 
Uh, give me a rating for his new album. Oof. Oof. One to ten. I'll say uh, eight to nine. Okay. I'll Hell say yeah. I'll say I'll say just eight to nine because there's a few songs that oh, it, it, this is what Eminem does, man. Puts fire stuff, but then one here and there is a whack ass song. Mm. Oh, I man, feel it, I feel it. like it's one that I'll be like. Mm, what's going on Stop. with him okay but you okay know? but godzilla counts for like seven songs yeah. <laughs> Godzilla's fine, but that's not my favorite song what is it uh no regrets okay that's fine i think like because he talks about his life he talks about like how he thinks and, and i just like that song a lot uh there's a lot of songs that are fire too i thought he had balls to do darkness about the uh yes yeah, the, the shooting. Right? Shooting. That, was, that was that was uh but that, that that's why i like man because he speaks about what's going on in, yeah. in society right now yep. and it's crazy because not everybody has the balls to talk about things yeah. like that. Some people just want to just don't. Not everybody, and there's nothing wrong with it, but not everybody wants to be involved with uh, the community and stuff like and that. And not everybody wants to get into politics. Too. Exactly, you know what I mean? And I do like, I, I don't like politics as much, but I do like the whole express yourself and help out others to think yeah. better and to, you know, like I said, mental illness out there, guys, is real. You know, do you think that um, the current climate of the of politics and everything has had any sort of influence on the MMA community? I mean, I know that, like for example, Trump went to what UFC fight did he go to a couple weeks ago? Was it the Kobe? Uh, no, no, I, no. I, mm, was it Kobe Covington and Usman? I think it was. Was it? I think so. I know. I don't remember. Or no, it could have been. Was it the Conor and Cowboy? No, the one, the one that Masvidal was wearing the robe. Oh, okay, okay, okay. My, yeah, Conor, yeah, Conor. Yeah, Was it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That he was there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, well, so, uh, no, but that's just being a fan. Yeah. I don't yeah, think there's nothing involved with but that. But I mean, you're also the president. Yeah, but you're a human being. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, come on, you cannot be human just because you have a job. Yeah. You know, it's like you're telling me I'm a fighter, so I'm supposed to be mean mugging and being mean to everybody all the time. No, no, no. I'm a, I'm a, you know, that's just your job. Your job should never tell you who you are. Mm. You know what I mean? Unless your job is like a hitman, then it tells you who you are. For you know sure. what I mean? <laughs> but sure, sure. that's not really his job. His job is a president, and you know whether people like him or not, it is what it is. You know, mm. you know, not a big fan, but whatever. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, but yeah, sure. but I'm not gonna judge him as a human being. Just, yeah. you know, I got my own opinions, but yeah. um, but I don't see that where it, it, it'll fix my opinion about him. I don't think that him being a fan of MMA, I think like, you mm. know, that's is what I do too. I want people to be fans of what I do. Sure, yeah, because I'm sure. a fan of what people do too. There's a lot. I'm a fan of movies, of, of rappers. I'm a fan of sports. I like soccer, basketball, tennis. The only thing I'm not a fan of is golf. You know what I mean? Uh, I even watch hockey at one point. Uh, I watch, but more like in the Olympics. I watch all the Olympics. Uh, so you, yeah, you you want people to be fan of what you do, especially anybody. You know what I mean? It don't really matter who it is. Your job shouldn't tell you that. You know? That's what's up. That's what's up. Yo, anything else? Um. No man. Go for it. For go sure. for it. <laughs> go for it, man. Um, I wanted to. Um, first off, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, let's say you have a video mm. that you don't know what you're gonna do with. Let's say you mm. got um a wedding. Yeah. That 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 you have a bunch of beautiful footage, mm. but but the groom and the bride has not seen anything because you don't have an editor. Oh my god. That's mm. when you need to hit up my main man, Tom. MJ more because he's gonna get you right for the right price every time. You know what I'm saying? That was improvised, but Tom, you can keep that. <laughs> um, what's up? Hey, before you can I give a little shout out? To yeah. of course, of yeah, course. No, no. Yeah. Before we okay, yeah, I, yeah, no, no, I, I see I'll, the I'll, list. I yeah, see yeah, the yeah, list. Yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna forget. I, I always gonna, have to show love. Man. I ain't gonna I, get, I, you know, I have to always show love. People show love for me, so no, I have to course. show love back. No, no, but keep going. I'll, I'll say it before you, you, you. For sure. No, and then just lastly, um, because I know you were, um. I was watching some of the uh, the footage of uh, Maz Vidal um, giving his input on basic people that weren't um, didn't have the correct determination. Mm-hmm. I kind of wanted to get your input. I know you you. That's you, why I posted because I, yeah. yes, I think the same way he thinks. Yeah. Yes, I think the same way he thinks. If you don't, if you don't have the balls to go out and fucking do it, you know. Well, you like I said, we live in a city that's full of distractions. And yeah, Miami's Miami. very distracted. You know what I mean? But uh, you know, you want to do something, you gotta dedicate your time to that. Mm. you know everybody wants to everybody wants to reach goals but nobody's really putting in the work you know especially in a sport people depend on their talent you know and um you gotta put in the work you know one time uh, one of my friends always told me like especially he used to tell me this because i used to have that problem i used to i used to always be known as like a 
when I was younger, I'm, I'm older now, so nobody calls me a prodigy. Nobody calls a 33-year-old prodigy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but when I was 20, 21, people used to call me a prodigy. And I feel like I used to always depend on my talent. I, I, I would put in the work, you know, but I think I could have put in more work. You know what I mean? And I feel like I would just get distracted. Like I said, I, I wasn't in the best. I didn't have the greatest habits, and I was just not in the right path at one point. Even, in my, or even when I met MMA, at the beginning, I was still doing a lot of stupid stuff until finally I just decided to really dedicate to what I want to do because you're getting older and you're starting realizing that you're like yo yeah not the same yeah. 22 23 year old anymore and plus you know maturity comes in as you get older you just you start getting more mature and things like that did you ever consider uh quitting or not doing it you know it's never been there oh I'll say I wouldn't say I did but when I was pausing for too long, uh, especially, like I said, my, my third pause, because the first one, I told you I was broke. Yeah. The second one, I got injured. Yeah. So it was different. The third one, it was, it was like me here. Mental, yeah. So, like I said, I, that's why I always give credit to my guy, Justin, man. He really, like, inspired me to go back to fighting. If he wouldn't have came in, I probably, I don't know if, if I would have taken on in. You have my my manager was always like, when you gonna you want to fight again? Like, let me know. I got you. I'll find your fight. But then mm -hmm. I, I'll tell him, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I'll get ready. Give me like two months, three months. I, I kept like giving him the runarounds and beating around the bush and I just yeah. didn't really commit to it, you know? Yeah. And like I said, once it became, when I, once I coached this guy the first time, it just, it just brought that out of me again. And from 10 since then, I've been on fire. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for real, for real, for real. <laughs> Can uh if you beat around the bush, you don't get a chance to beat Donald Bush. You know. What I mean? Oh my That's God. A bar. God <laughs> damn, that was beautiful. <laughs> that was beautiful. Oh Bro, my God. Fuck that guy. I'm a little inspired by you me know, right But now. you know what? Hey man, things happen for a reason. If I would have beat that guy, I probably wouldn't be right now fighting for this title or anything. <clears throat> yeah. And you know, to be very honest, I always wanted to redeem those two titles I never fought. Mm. I mean, that I lost, that I fought and I lost. I always wanted to redeem myself. You know what I mean? I always felt like, damn man, I let them sit because. This is what it is. Those two titles, I felt like, damn, am I choking in the big moment? Mm. Because you start thinking that. Am I choking in the big moment? Like, am I that guy? Did mm. you ever feel nervous or no? And when is it? Is it walking up to the ring? Is it inside the doctor? When, when do you get nervous? I get more nervous before the fights. Like, and I'm not meaning right before. I mean, like, days before, like, hours before. When I'm in the locker room, I'm, I'm very cool. Already, I'm very cool in the locker room. Like I said, I elevate my fear. So this, the fighting is nothing, man. Look, man, I battle a lot of, I, like I told you, growing up in my uh, teenager moment, teenager life, actually even my childhood and teenager life, I, I went through a lot of bad moments. I mean, I went through a lot of shit. I was in a very dark place at one point in my life and I battle a lot of demons. And right now fighting is not bigger than this. You know what I mean? I fought worse. I, 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 I fought worse things than fighting, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why, like... And beat them, too. And beat them. So that's why I don't... It doesn't bother me no more. And sure. I'm just very focused and just get what I got to do and do what I got to do and get what I got to get. That's beautiful. That's beautiful right there. Ladies and gentlemen, Danny Chavez, March 14th at Global Legion FC, home of the fighter for the World Featherweight Championship, MMA Night at the warehouse at Magic City Innovation District, 6301 Northeast 4th Avenue. You see the address and the flyer on screen. Danny, I know we got uh, a little bit of love to give to some of your um, sponsors. Yes, um, not only sponsors, people and everything. People and everything. Um, first, um, I'm fighting March 14th, which is my birthday. March 14th, so, hey, birthday. So, hey, that's the best gift so you can get That's the best right gift there. I could give myself. Hell yeah. <laughs> two, come on. if you're going to come and watch me, bring me a gift too. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it wouldn't mind, I wouldn't come mind on. a gift. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Cheer for me and then when I get out of the cage with the bell, just Hell you know, yeah, give I me a present. <laughs> that's going to be a vibe. <laughs> but first, okay, I want to, you know, I want to give a quick, quick shout out. To, uh, number one, MMA Masters. You know what I mean? Uh, they've done everything for me. Mm. My coaches, Cesar Carneiro. Danny Valverde and the whole squad, you know, uh, to uh, um, my my students, you know, all you guys, you know, my students and my prodigies, and they're my, they're, like I said, they're one of my motivations, you know what I mean? My friends and family, you know, very supportive, you know, they don't, they're not really part of the sport, but they, they have this peace in my head, you know what I mean? Like they have this, they, they play a part, you know what I mean? To um, my manager right here, like I said, 
That's my dog right here. Antonio. He knows. And uh, my uh, management company, First Round Management, uh, to me, they're the best. They've been treating me very well. Uh, they recently won uh, Florida MMA Awards for best company out okay. there. Okay. Right. Okay. You know, it was recent. I gotta give a shout out to Global Legion, man. They give me, they give me a shot to fight for the title. They gave me a main event. Uh, you know, I wasn't supposed to be the main event. Actually, there was gonna be more titles on the line, but they they started to do me right. They're like, you know, we did you wrong. We put Donald Bush. Yeah. So we're gonna do you right. We're gonna make you the main event, and you're gonna headlight this card. And by doing that, it gave me it, it boosted my record. I have the if I'm not wrong, I have the I'm the only Colombian in South Florida with the most main events. Hey, I held I, I held you know. I have six main events and two co-main events in South Florida. You know what I mean? Uh, that means half of my career has been always, you know, top. 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 Yeah. Uh, everybody knows if you follow me on Instagram, you know I've been eating a smoothie spot all the time. <laughs> God damn, that place is fire. Yep, yep. Hey man, I eat it all the time, man. It's fire. It's fire. You gotta check it out. All right, there's a lot of places there. It's in Hialeah, the beach, Kendo, Doral. There's a lot of places where you could find a smoothie spot. Uh, Body RX. But he always, always treats me right. Uh, uh, is a uh, IV vitamins in uh, therapy, therapy to help you to recover. Okay. Uh, fight back CBD. Mm. Right now, uh, it's good for inflammation. I know I'm a big fan of the CBD because it's good for inflammation. Now I'll say something about CBD. You know, some people say, "Oh, do you feel it?" I'm like, I don't know. I don't really. I cannot really tell you because now, like, I, I drink and I right away I feel good. Yeah, faded. Yeah. But when you do the research, it tells you it does cure inflammation yeah. and all stuff. And you, you know, when you're a fighter, you're gonna have a lot of inflammation. You know? yeah. So it helps you, and especially the nighttime one because I, I, you know, you train very hard, and you don't get to really have a good sleep. So I take the nighttime and it helps me to have a nice sleep. You know, uh, diamond cup protects my nuts. Yep. You know what I mean? So you protect you, the family jewel, yes, baby. Come yes, on. Yes, yes. <laughs> Stunner Fitness, that's my boy, um, Gabriel Stunner. It's been, you know, we used to train together before, and um, now he actually is one of my, my conditioning coach, and he's been nothing but a, a blessed, you know what I mean? He's been helping me out a lot. Dynamic Wellness is another um, IV therapeutic, uh, helps you to recover, they help me out a lot too. Uh, Shop Fight Camp, you know, they actually made shirts for me with my face all. Hey. Painted with a Columbia flag, smeared down. It was fire. It's a hell great yeah. shirt. Hell yeah. If you want to get them, it's online, guys. Just check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it uh, out. I got our Vasquez Drywall. It's my boy, Nico. That's Nico. his company. He's been nothing but supportive. He's always hooking me up when I need help, and he's always been there, so I got to rock him. Mm. Fernandez Dental, you know, they always, uh, you know, take care of the smile. Yeah, kept that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The and and they, and they they help me a lot with the with the mouthpieces. They make my mouthpieces. Okay. All my cans, they've been the ones that made my mouthpieces. Dope, 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 and dope. Yeah, you gotta protect your mouth, man. Mm -hmm. And you have to have those custom made mouthpieces yeah. to protect mm -hmm. your jaw, man. You don't want to get knocked out. And white line white line therapeutic. Um, this girl Amy, she's been actually helping out a lot. She's actually we're working on a sponsorship with her. You know, she's actually dope. helping out not for me, just for my guys too. Okay. So she's uh, she's good right now. You know, so it's cool. It's cool. I'm, I'm like I said. Uh, I get a lot of love, so I gotta get the love back. You know what I mean? I can, for you know, sure. I'm not here to just take in, I give to. For sure, for sure. Right? So, and, and of course, Midnight in Miami, guys, man. I gotta I give you guys you. love, man. You, know, you guys are so. bringing me here, putting me out there. You know, I, no, I, I appreciate it. No, we, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, we're always here to help each other. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I appreciate you coming on, and, and, and we're looking forward to, to having some of uh, your students come on as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, they will. And one of my students, and not my student, but this is my boy right there, Luciano. You Luciano, know, Luciano, we got Luciano on the set. Eventually, you know? get in the set, but it will yeah. be in Spanish. I don't know if you, you know, you speak Spanish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Gonna have to work with him with you that. Hacemos una en español, eh? But right now he's living with me. Actually, okay. he's staying in my house. He just hey. came from Argentina about Friday, and then okay. he grabbed and he grabbed the next day a brown belt and tapped him out with a knee bar. It was fucking he's, beautiful. Yeah, he's a blue belt. Vamos, carajo, and, um, vamos, Argentina, la concha. <laughs> And it's crazy because Colombians and Argentinians, you know, getting along. It's crazy because in soccer, we hate each other. It's crazy. Okay, we, we do, right, we right. do. Yeah, in soccer, we hate each other. But nah, man, we have a great friendship. Like I said, uh, a lot of love for everybody, man. We live in a cruel, we live in a dark, we're living in dark moments right now. We're in a yeah. dark era and we just need to show love, man. Yeah, we need sure. to care about each other. You know, we, we, we need to stop being greedy and selfish in this for world. Sure. We need to mm -hmm. really care about each other. For sure, definitely. Um, we appreciate you coming on. Um, again, we appreciate your... Um, uh, being able to speak about mental health and being able to speak about, uh, you know, things that 
can you know some people may not be open to speaking about and you know some personal notes yeah. and, you know about your family and that sort of thing so we appreciate you i didn't get deeper because <laughs> you know you gotta give me some drinks you know what i mean i, I couldn't get deeper either we'll, you know what we'll I mean? get, and it's more uh when you know we'll get, i talk like that when you know not on air <laughs> <laughs> we'll get mass I, I, gave, I, gave, I gave you some i guys gave you i give you a say i'll say 60 percent of what yeah, i yeah, you know go. we'll get we'll get mass Vidal's tequila next time you know? oh yeah he just came out with a new one man what is it called again El recuerdo. El recuerdo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't gonna remember I haven't tried shit. it yet. I haven't tried it yet, but I will try after the fight. Because okay. you ain't gonna remember shit. That's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but for sure, uh, March fourteenth, ladies and gentlemen, World Featherweight Championship. And my birthday. And <laughs> bring them a gift. That. Yeah, bring them a gift. <laughs> um, at Magic City Innovation District, uh, Global Legion FC, home of the fighter, ladies and gentlemen. Danny, the Colombian Warrior Cabin. Thank, Thank you, you guys very much. Thank you. Right. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you Thursday at midnight or Friday during the day, you know, when you want to work. Um, and, uh, and yeah, check us out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that. Good. See you next time. Thank you. And it don't matter what the world thinks, you can say how you feel on When you can push it to the